So welcome again. Um, just a note, if you have any questions as we go through the slides today, please feel free to ask them at any time. You can use the um, chat window or in the um, Adobe Connect pod there on the left-hand side of the screen to ask questions, and we'll pause and, and answer them as we have a, an appropriate moment. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Here's our agenda for the, today. Probably looks pretty familiar from other forums. I'll give a few updates. Courtney will give us some updates on services and software development. And Leah will finish up with some updates from um, community events and, and various goings on. And then we'll open the floor for questions. OK, so I've got a few things. Um, one is just a reminder that we held an OJS training webinar yesterday afternoon um, and gave a brief overview of um, the Open Journal Systems platform, which we host as a, as a service for members who subscribe to it. Um, and the slides for that presentation and demo are available at the handle that's linked to here on the slide. We also recorded that webinar and we'll be captioning it and putting it up on YouTube um, as soon as we can get that done. So you can look for that as well. We also wanted to let you know about some exciting news for us, and that is that we're relaunching our TDL DSpace users group, which has been, you know, a little bit um, inactive for the last few years, although we've had lots of good DSpace activity going on with the DSpace Education Working Group and some other things happening. But we're um, working with Ed Warga, the digital collections librarian at Texas A&M Corpus Christi to get this group active again. And we're really excited and grateful to Ed for his leadership on this. <laughs> um, we're going to have a kickoff meeting on August 15th. It will be a virtual meeting using um, BlueJeans, our web conferencing software, so that as many people as are interested in um, getting together with other DSpace users and repository managers around the state of Texas and and who knows, maybe, you know, a little outside of Texas, too, can get together to talk about DSpace issues and see what kinds of things we could do um, as an interest group and a users group uh, to make our DSpace service better and help each other with various issues that we all encounter. So be sure to mark your calendars for that if you're interested. It will be an hour-long meeting, I think, in the afternoon. But um, I'll just note that Leah's going to be sending out an email this afternoon or right after this meeting, probably, um, about this with more details. So be on the lookout for that as well. It'll be coming through the TDL announcements list. We'll have more about this, too, at the next TDL forum. So expect more news coming down the pipe. OK, and so I also wanted to give you a few uh, little updates about some of our systems administration work, um, which sometimes becomes invisible work because it's not, uh, it doesn't result in things that you necessarily see um, as end users of some of these um, systems and platforms. But I did want to give a little shout out to our systems administration team for a lot of really great work that they've been doing to keep our systems running smoothly and also to improve the way we're hosting some of your services. We've been working to offload some technical debt that had built up over time with some legacy servers that were weighing us down and we didn't need any more. We finished a project on that just recently. Um, Clark Kim, our senior DevOps lead, has been working on some on migrating some of our servers into a new architecture, which we're calling the VPC migration project. It's going to set us up for better, more secure systems and also systems through which we can automate um, tasks and deployments better. So a lot of preparatory work there. You've probably seen emails coming from me um, over the last month or two about 
brief downtime for some of your services as we make those changes. Uh, and we're nearing the end of that, all that work and that project right now. We've also implemented new backup script, impl uh, a new backup script across all of our services to standardize and improve that part of our, um, of our service. So lots of good work going on by our technical team, in particular our systems administration staff, to improve and, and maintain the uh, hosted services that you all use. We also have implemented a uh, new schedule for doing regular op operating system updates on all our services. Um, this will t these OS updates result in just a very just a blip of downtime um, when we're doing them. So we're doing them on a schedule um, that is up here uh, on the screen. Um, and we're doing this as an interim measure until we can automate these OS updates, um, in which case we'll be doing them overnight, you know, like midnight or something like that, when no one will ever notice that, that things are, are down for a minute or two. Um, but for now, this is what we're doing. So be aware that um, you may see um, a little blip of downtime when we do these, these updates um, for the next few months. We also started a page on our website, our system status update page, which um, has this information and which you can go to at any time to, uh, if you're experiencing downtime, to see if maybe there's something going on with our systems that we already know about. Okay, and finally, um, want to let you know and remind everybody about a little project that Lauren McCulloch, our administrative associate, has undertaken this summer to update and refresh all of our services contacts so that we know we have um, good, up-to-date, accurate contacts for each of the services that we host for your institution. So you may have gotten an email from Lauren about doing this. Um, if you have and have not yet um, provided her with updated information, please take a few minutes today to let us know who the main library contacts are for the services that we host for you. If you haven't gotten an email from her and think you should have, you can contact Lauren or contact us at info at tdl.org and, and ask about you know, where we are with your institution and make sure we have updated contacts. This is really helpful to us um, as we um, you know, when we need to contact you about things, um, and we're going to try to do this a little more regularly so that we have good contacts for everybody. Okay, I think that's it for me. I am going to turn it over to Courtney to um, continue our presentation. Go for it, Courtney. Hi, thanks, Christy. Hi, everybody. Um, all right, so I'm going to dive right in here. Um, the first thing I am so excited to announce, and hopefully um, all of our Texas Data Repository members will also be excited to hear that we have released our training videos. So they are all available to you now. There are five of them. And basically, they're introductory training videos for any uh, user of the Texas Data Repository Dataverse. You can access the series on YouTube following this link. Um, and just uh, want to shout out to the Odom Institute because we based our videos largely on a set that the Odom Institute created uh, several years ago that we updated. Um, there are five areas covered in the videos. There's an overview of the TDR, um, information about logging in, information about publishing data sets. Uh, managing permissions, and also customization, which is the last and sort of most advanced of the videos. Um, if, if you like listening to me talk, um, <laughs> dive right in and take a look at the videos and let me know what you think. We're excited about them. Um, it's taken us a while to get these started. Uh, we also want to give a giant thank you to Anna Dabrowski and Texas A&M and the TDR Steering Committee for their work helping to produce these videos. Um, and Texas A&M in particular let us use their audiovisual suite. Um, Anna and I spent a lovely day working on these together um, in College Station. 
And there's my TDR steering committee, or at least most of them. Um, so we're also doing something really exciting um, in August on the 23rd, to be exact, from 10 to 11 a.m. Uh, the TDR steering committee has decided that they are going to do a, a re-up of the panel that they presented at the Texas um, Conference on Digital Libraries this year. Um, so it's basically the same panel that we presented there. So if you didn't have a chance to go, we'll be doing it live. We've also updated it a little bit based on feedback. Um, and it's just a year in review from several, several of our TDR uh, institutional liaisons. We will send out more information later this week about how to sign up for it and what to expect. Um, so our senior software engineer, Nick Woodward, presented an excellent lightning talk at the Sambara Virtual Connect last week. Um, it's a online virtual version of Sambara Connect, which is, of course, related to the Sambara and Hydra, or Hi Haiku, no longer Hydra, um, and Hyrax community. He gave an update on something that we've recently joined, the Haiku Service Provider Group. And this service pro pro provider group is basically looking to create an interest group discussing the Haiku repository application, particularly focused on keeping development aligned with Hyrax maturation. Hyrax, of course, being the non-multi-tenant um, solution that was developed as part of the Hydra in a Box project. Um, all of the group members are interested in working together to contribute to the maintenance and development of Haiku. And Nick gave a really great comprehensive update on the service provider group's work so far, as well as our focus and what we plan to work on together in the future. Um, in general, basically, um, we're just going to continue to work on migration tools for Haiku um, and making sure that Haiku is aligned with Hyrax, which um, was kind of uncertain for a while, but it seems like we have a really nice way forward there. Um, you'll see a report coming from TDL very soon about the uh, Haiku pilot that we did. And uh, just so you know, we are also part of the Bridge to Haiku project, um, which is going to be, we're, we'll be working on that, hosting a Haiku implementation with um, University of Houston um, migrating from content DM and with University of Miami also migrating from content DM and then testing migrations from DSpace for our own users. We'll be doing that in October through about January or February next year. If you want to get involved at all, there are a number of ways. Of course, you can download Haiku if you should choose to do so. Um, but you can also just see what we're working on by going to the GitHub for Haiku which um, Nick has linked to there. Um, and we are attending the monthly service providers meeting. And if you're interested in any information about how those meetings are going, just reach out to me, and I will let you know. Um, the Digital Preservation Management Workshop is happening next week. Um, we're very excited about it. it um, it's going to be hosted, of course, at Trinity University here in San Antonio, right down the street from where I'm coming from right now. Um, and TDL, of course, is the co-sponsor of the workshop. Um, Dr. Nancy McGovern had an opportunity to speak to this forum just a few months ago, so many of you heard what she had to say about the workshop. Um, and she'll be joined by Kari Smith, also of MIT, co-teaching the workshop with me. Um, and then on Wednesday, we have Jessica Meyerson coming to give us our keynote talk, so that's all very exciting. Jessica Meyerson, of course, works on software preservation, and so that's of great interest to the digital preservation folks in this meeting. Also, don't forget to make sure it's on your calendars that the Archive Matica Camp Texas at the University of Houston is going to be November 14th through 16th. And we expect registration to be up within the next week or two. Um, I just talked to the folks at Artifactual Systems, of course, who develop um, Archive Matica. And they've said they're trying to get it up by the end of next week. And so you'll see an announcement from us about that as well. 
Um, this is a reminder about digital preservation services at TDL. Um, we've got a deadline approaching. Um, the Digital Preservation Network has set an ingest deadline of November 1st um, for this year. So if you plan to ingest content into Deepin, please contact contact us no later than October 1st so that we can help coordinate that ingest and make sure that everything happens smoothly and provide the best experience for everyone. Um, I've also reached out to the members of our digital preservation services and had a pretty enthusiastic response about a bi-monthly digital preservation services user group. So right now we're in the process of planning that. I sent out a doodle poll, um, the either dreaded or much beloved doodle poll. So uh, we're planning something for probably, it's looking like it's going to be the first part of August. And it'll mostly be a planning meeting to start. And then we'll choose our regular meeting times. And basically, the point of this is so that we can hopefully share workflows um, and work with each other on the digital preservation storage options that TDL provides. And finally, as we move closer to the start of a new fiscal year, please let TDL know if you're interested in pursuing digital preservation services. And we can answer any questions you have, um, including um, DPS members, of course, have access to this new bi-monthly DPS users group. So please let us know if you want to join digital preservation services. And I'm still here to talk to you in detail about it. And as many of you know, I love talking about digital preservation. And that's it for me. I'm handing over to the wonderful Leah DeForest. Thanks, Courtney. Good morning, everyone. I um, wanted to point out that uh, TDL is working on refreshing our website. So if you visited TDL.org recently, you may have noticed a few changes. Over the past few months, we've updated sections of our website and reorganized our main navigation bar. And we're going to continue to refresh the content and make changes to the architecture on the website throughout the summer. And our hope is that these changes will make navigating our website easier and more engaging for all users. But if you come across something and you have any feedback on our website, please email us, info at tdl.org. And love that picture from TCDL. It's such a cute one, but I'm sad that we blocked out <laughs> Marcia. <Yeah, Marcia's. laughs> Okay, so and again, if you've been to TDL.org, on our homepage, we are linking to a really neat exhibit from UT Rio Grande. And I got my favorite kind of email last week from Kristen Weishadel, the digital ar archivist at UTRGV, who asked if TDL could help promote their hometown team's digital exhibit. And for those of you who attended Kristen's lightning talk at TCDL, you'll be pleased to know that the English language version of the exhibit is now available online. And the Spanish language version will be up, I think, sometime.